So as you may or may not know, I recently did a video on funny Austrian German words and then one where I compared German to English. So yeah, English is not my mother tongue and this person here requested um, that I do a video on learning languages and what worked for me and so here it is. First off, let me just put it out there. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a professional. I'm not someone who's like fluent in 20 different languages and can totally give you the ultimate um, advice for learning languages, but I have studied a few languages in the past years and I have reached what I consider relative fluency in English. I just thought I'd give you a general idea, general advice on what I did to reach this level of English without it being my mother tongue. Let me just start off with trying to find a definition for the word fluent because I think everybody has a different idea of what that word means. And personally, I think that if you're fluent in language, it means that you don't have to think before you speak. You don't have to consider grammar rules. You don't have to consider, you don't have to think about vocabulary. You don't translate in your brain anymore. You don't do that. What you do is you have a thought and then you express it. And there's no in-between stage of you just stopping and being like, okay, let me put that sentence together first. You just talk, you just do it. And that's wonderful, I love it. So first of all, I just have to say that some people are just better at learning languages and at studying languages because they have some sort of a talent for it. You know yourself, you can probably tell what 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 things are like come easy to you, what classes come easy to you and where you struggle. Like I know a friend of mine, she's really good at math, but then on the other hand, she studied English just the same as me and she really struggled with it because it was just not the way her brain was wired. My brain works more easily with languages and I've always been kind of it's I didn't I didn't have I never really had to study a lot because as soon as I got to a certain level things would just come really easy to me like I just pick up on stuff I pick up on pronunciations and on sentence structures and on phrases and um, I just developed like I just really easily developed like a sort of feeling for language and that's definitely helped me so much with learning so um, especially with English, like that has been the big thing. I think it's just giving me like a major boost. It obviously doesn't mean that you can't learn languages if you don't have a talent for it, but it just makes it a lot easier. Another thing I want to say is if you plan on learning a language, start now. Start right now because the older you get, the harder it will be. Now obviously you still have like a good, if you're like my age, you obviously still have a bunch of time left, but still Start as early as you can because that always makes it a lot easier. Don't push it like back and be like, okay, I'm gonna learn that later on, later on, later on, because suddenly you're gonna be 50 and it's gonna be really hard for your brain to process all this new information. You obviously still can learn languages when you're older. It's just so much easier when you're young. And so that's what I would encourage everybody to do. Do it now, learn it now because you, will, you won't forget the language, but it will just be harder for you to learn it later on. And not only do different people have different talents, for things. Different people also have different ways to learn and the ways that work the best for you. You have to find out which way suits you the best and which works the best for you and then make use of that. So for example, I think I, there's like a couple of learning types, I don't remember all of them, but I know that there's like one where listening to something helps you really remember it or reading it or seeing it helps you really, really remember it. So you have to kind of figure out which works the best for you. For example, for me, it's like really a mixture of things. I, for, with words, I need to know how the word is written before I can pronounce it because I associate pronunciation with letters and with like letter structures. So if someone is telling me a word in a language I don't understand, I can't just repeat it and hit it with the pronunciation right away. I need to see how the word is written and then I like repeat it again and I read the word while someone says it. I'm like, okay, okay, this is this pronunciation, this is that. So that's what works for me. So figure out which is your way to learn things and then use that one because that's gonna give you the best results. So if you start learning a language, I'm sorry, but there's no way around learning the vocabulary and learning the grammar and sitting down and really just focusing on that. You don't have to remember that forever. You don't have to remember the rules forever. I have no idea about English grammar rules or even German grammar rules. I have no clue. You don't need to remember it forever because once you reach fluency, that'll be fine. Like it's just going to be ingrained in your brain and your brain will work it out itself. You don't have to think, okay, if this and this happens, then this and this, like if this and this, 
word is in the sentence and the next word has to have an ing ending or something like that. You won't have to think about that anymore. But just to get you started, you do need to learn the rules. You do need to learn the structure and how everything works. But if you keep studying and if you keep being diligent about it, then you will reach a level where that's just going to be second nature to you and you don't have to think about it anymore. But here is the good news. Once you have reached a certain level of a language, there's ways to make it a lot easier for you to really, really get a feeling for the language and for you to really just learn it and to understand it properly. What I did with English was I started off reading books in English. What worked for me the best was picking books that I had either read already in German, so I basically knew the story, I knew what was happening, and I couldn't get entirely lost, because that's what really takes the fun out of it. You don't want to sit there and be like, oh god, I have no idea what's happening. I don't know what's going on. It's just not fun. You're not going to be into it. You're not going to be really focused on it and you're not going to be able to absorb the words and, and just to understand the story properly. And that will not help your studies at all. Or you can also pick books that are sort of geared towards, I would say, 12 to 13 year old girls. That's what I did with Spanish, for example. I just picked like one of these girly books that are still kind of fun to read, even at my age, but that I would normally not read because it's just, you can't really justify reading like books about hormones and boys and love. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I read one of those really girly books in Spanish and the thing is the vocabulary is very simple at that stage so chances are you will understand most of it and you will again understand what's happening in the story and you won't get like really really frustrated because you have no idea what's happening. Which this leads me to another topic which is when you're reading books you're obviously not gonna understand every single word that is used because the vocabulary you learn in class is not obviously not going to encompass everything that's used in a book because there's just it's just not gonna happen I'm sorry it's not gonna happen but I would actually recommend not using a dictionary on the side it's really not helpful at least to me it didn't work for me at all it kind of breaks the flow of the book it it stops you in the middle it kind of you can't really get into the book you can't get into the story and that that's really not a lot of fun. Chances are you really might have to sit there and translate every third or fourth word and that's not fun. It's not, you're not gonna enjoy yourself and you're gonna hate it, you're gonna resent it eventually. And that's really not what you want to achieve. After all, there are ways of making learning a language enjoyable, so why would you not make it fun for yourself? Don't worry too much about the vocabulary because by reading it, by understanding it, by understanding the sentence, you can often just kind of guess what that word means by context. So that makes it a lot more just, I don't know, organic. The process is not like, okay, there's a word, I don't know, let's look it up. It's just, okay, I get what this word means just by reading and you can't forget about the dictionary most of the time. Obviously, if there are words where you're like, ah, I really, really want to know that specific word, go for it, use a dictionary, but I just wouldn't recommend using it for every single word you happen to not understand. Another thing I would recommend um, when you're reading books is to not focus too much on the sentences themselves. Like, don't look at it too much as sentences. Look at it as a story. Try to read the book as if you're reading in your mother tongue. If you're reading a book in English, you're not you're not like looking at okay, the sentence goes this way and that's what it means. You're kind of just picturing it in your brain, and that's what makes it enjoyable. It's a bit trickier, obviously, because you can't really sometimes understand the whole picture. But just try not to make it. Uh, a study, you know, don't be like, okay, I'm gonna have to sit down and like read it and try to remember things because to me personally that didn't help me at all. What helped me was just reading and without noticing while you're reading, you're kind of picking up on things and you're gonna start noticing things again and again and you're like, okay, I remember this word from the, from three pages ago when I think it meant that thing, so it's probably gonna mean the same thing here. Um, so that's kind of like a more organic process and you keep coming across the same words, you're repeating it in a really fun way and it's just enjoyable. It's, it's the perfect way for me to learn languages by reading. The next step for me was to watch a lot, 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 it doesn't even mean a lot anymore, English movies or TV shows or something in the language you're trying to study because that's going to help you with pronunciation. For example, if you're... I don't know Chinese, but I've heard that it's really important with Chinese to the intonation and the way you pronounce things 
could mean entirely different things. So I guess uh, listening to someone speak Chinese and watching t Chinese TV shows or films or whatever is going to help you tons. And it, it doesn't even matter if it's not a language like that. For example, with English, that's where I got most of my pronunciation from, TV shows and movies and watching it over and over again. And for English, it's really, really easy because there's just so much out there that you can access. So many movies, so many TV shows, like so many. <laughs> so that's really easy, but obviously in other languages it, is, it might be a bit tricky. For example, in German, I honestly can't say that there is like a really, really good German movie I would recommend or a really, really good TV show. TV shows mainly are terrible. There's probably some movies I don't know, but most of the TV shows I know suck. So, yeah. And also with French and Spanish, I tried finding things I could watch. It's just really, really hard to find things that are good and that are um, just easy to understand because that's another thing you have to keep in mind. Different people speak different dialects of their language. For example, uh, Spanish is spoken entirely differently in Spain than it is in South America. It's still the same language, but there's just different expressions, sometimes different words for things, and definitely a different pronunciation. So what I would recommend is watching something from the country where that language originated. So Spanish, watch something, a Spanish TV show, or French, a French one and not a Canadian one. The only thing I would say though is if you're learning English, which I doubt because you're watching this in English, um, <laughs> uh, if you're learning English, then watch something from California because I have noticed that in California they speak this really nice, even almost um, to the T, the language that you learn in school. It, you don't learn British pronunciation in school, you learn mostly Californian pronunciation and it's really easy to understand that and luckily a lot of films are from LA so yeah it's just it's the perfect opportunity to learn English. So yeah watch movies, read books, spend time with the language. Don't just sit with your school books and be like oh, I have to learn this because what you learn in school is usually not what makes you fluent in the language. It's just the basics. You have to reach fluency for yourself because no teacher can teach you that. And then lastly, speak the language. That is the key to learning it. It's something I really struggle with. Like if I, I speak decent French and Spanish, but I have such big issues with speaking it because I'm like, I don't know if it's correct. Can I give me five minutes to picture the sentence and to make a, make a sentence and then like double and triple check if it's correct. You can make mistakes, that's totally fine. That's something I need to tell myself as well. It's fine to make mistakes when you're learning, when you're just learning a language. And if you speak with native speakers, they're not gonna be like, oh my God, you suck at this. They're gonna be like, wonderful, you're doing great, but this and this needs improvement. So they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be mean to you about it, unless they're mean people. <laughs> that's a whole different matter though. So yeah, be brave. Put yourself out there because that's the only way you're really gonna learn it. I think if I had done that with English sooner or if I did it now with French and Spanish, I'd be much better at learning. Um, obviously, you don't always have native speakers to talk to, but if you do, use that opportunity. You really, really use it and don't be afraid of your own knowledge because everybody needs to start out somewhere and that's just gonna give you a major boost. On a side note, the not speaking part is actually the reason why I suck at Latin because it's just, it's a dead language and no one speaks it and you don't study it for speaking it, you study it like, it's just, it's just random whatever crap. I hate Latin. <laughs> I hate Latin so much. <sighs> and yeah, I had, it, I had it in school for five years, five years five years, I can't do anything with it. I can, sometimes I can like tell where words are coming from, like okay, I really realize that word is from Latin, but that's it. After five years, it's terrible. <laughs> ah, so bad. Anyway, you guys, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful to some of you. Uh, if you have any further questions, don't be afraid to leave them down below and I'll answer all of them for you. And I hope you're having a lovely week. I'm gonna see you guys soon, bye.